Welcome back, bookworms! You guys seem to like my lists a lot more than you like my reviews. So here's another list just for you. Today I want to share with you some of the books that I read that were simply a disappointment for me. It happens. I approached uh, each one of these books with a certain expectation and that expectation was simply not met. Either someone specifically recommended this book to me or maybe it just sounded good or it's widely considered as a good book and you know I didn't like them. I'm not saying in any way that any of these books are bad. It just didn't work for me. So if you see a book or an author that you really like, sorry, deal with it. Let's get going. The first book that I want to talk about is Beautiful Creatures by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. And this is simply a case of me not being in the right aid group, in my opinion. I don't know why I picked a book that was clearly marked as young adults and thought it would be really suitable for grown-ups. I mean, some books are, but this just wasn't one of those books. For me, it was pretty childish, but you know, if you're about 16 years old, this book can be perfect for you. I'm just 10 years later. Not really my style of book, even though it did have a pretty cool setting in South Carolina. South Carolina? Maybe North Carolina? Oh my god, I don't remember. But in a southern state in the United States. And it had a whole uh, voodoo superstition kind of thing. It was pretty cool. But it was simply too much of a teenage drama for a person like me who is looking for something a bit more grown up. And I do like an occasional young adult book. I'm currently reading one, but that was just too childish. Moreover, it has something that really annoyed me. I, I have a million of pet peeves about books. And there is one that I already talked about in previous videos that has to do with romance. And it just, it was there in the book. I mean, I have trouble with two horny 16 year olds who are dating, but the entire world says that it's true love. It's not true love. It's a teenage crush, maybe even a teenage love. But for God's sake, uh, adults are willing to sacrifice themselves for these two who you're not even sure if in two years when they finish high school, they even want to be together. And it just, that kind of bugs me, but generally I just think that for this book I'm not in the right age group. The next book is The Curious Case of the Dog at Nighttime by Mark Haddon. And this is a book that people really love, I just don't. And it's one of those cases, in my opinion, where an author does something unique and innovative to some extent, but people th say that he just invented the wheel. I mean, he didn't. It was pretty cool to write a book from a point of view of an autistic kid. It was very really interesting. I mean, the concept was interesting. I just did not find the book that interesting. I was just bored. I stopped in the middle. I didn't finish it. I was too bored to continue. And yeah, but no hard feelings Mark had on because he did have another book called Spot of Bother that I thought was absolutely brilliant. The next book is The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson and I wasn't even sure that I'm going to put this book on this list because it wasn't like I was expecting something really brilliant uh, before I read it, but people were talking about how funny it is and how good it is and like British humor and it seems like a book that was right up my alley and it wasn't. I didn't find this book funny at all. I didn't find this book interesting. I started reading it and kept waiting for the interesting or really funny parts to happen. And then I realized that what I was just reading was supposed to be interesting and funny. And it wasn't, so I just stopped. I think that Rosie Project, like any other comedy book or you know film for that matter, is really, really a matter of taste. And you either like that type of comedy or you don't, and I thought it was just a book for me that I would like this kind of comedy, and I didn't, so I stopped reading it, not going to read the sequel or sequels, and um, yeah, I'm managing to live with that. Okay, now we're getting into the serious stuff, because the next book is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. This is a classic. People love it. People say this book changed their lives, and I hate it. 
I hate this book so much. I hate the protagonist, Holden. I hate his behavior. And since I heard that the author, J.D. Salinger, also uh, behaved similarly, I know that I would have problems with him. Have I met him? Um, if you were alive. I know that this book is considered such a classic, but I just could not stand it. First of all, I did not find the story itself very interesting. Seriously, but also the big problem that I have with this book is once again the protagonist. Here's another pet peeve of mine in books and movies in real life, real people. I just cannot stand it when people have a certain worldview, but they think that every single person that doesn't share this view is either lying, stupid, or being blindfolded or brainwashed by society or by the media or by the government or something that wants us to do bad things. No, Holden, I just don't share your opinion and view of the world. It doesn't make me stupid. You have no monopoly on the truth. Yes, that is a quote from 12 Angry Men, but a damn good quote. Don't tell me I'm blind just because I don't think like you. And that bothered me so much that I could not continue reading this book, but I had to because I was in high school and I had a homework assignment, so I did. But I didn't want to. The next book is The Shining by Stephen King. Now, I have this complicated relationship with uh, Steve. Either I really love his books or I can't stand them. There seem to be no middle here. And in the case of The Shining, I don't know which one I hate more, the book or the movie, because I also have an issue with Stanley Kubrick, but that's not the point of this video. Let's start with the fact that this is a horror book. I didn't find it scary at all, and that's kind of a major problem. Overall, there is a problem there that I just seen pretty much every single book by Stephen King. It's so filled with swearing and gore and sex and if you've seen my videos, you know I generally don't have a problem with it, but it's just so, so much and too much and at a certain point I would just want to say, okay, we got it, you're so edgy because you talk about sex. Like, no, just, it's just too much. It, it's tasteless at some point, but the main problem remains that this is not a scary book in my opinion and it was supposed to be, so no. Speaking of Stephen King, the next book was actually praised and handled by him, which should have given me a clue that I wouldn't like it, and it's Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Before she was famous for Gone Girl, which I did not read, her debut novel was supposed to be something really scary and edgy and thrilling and gory, and it was none of these. Well, it was gory, but just like Stephen King, the book is filled with overly horny people just have sex all the time. Like, they don't do anything else. And, like, in front of other people and every, it just... It was tasteless, like in Stephen King's books. I mean, you know, I can talk about sex all day. I can even talk about kinky sex, if that's what you're into, for an entire day. It will make me a more interesting person. And a book can be a really good, scary, thrilling book without being overly filled and decorated with too much gore and too much sex, like tasteless gore and tasteless sex. That's not what makes the book good. And it seems like Gillian Flynn thought, you know, how I'll make this book edgy. Mm. I know every single character will be a uh, nymphomaniac and everyone will be into very gory murder. It just, you know, I didn't find it good and I didn't find it interesting and I also found the protagonist incredibly annoying. She was one of those very smart outcasts, but she was so she was so cliché and stereotypical that instead of liking her, and I usually do like outcast characters, she was just so antagonizing. It's like, ooh, look at me, I'm miserable because I'm too smart for my surroundings. Seriously, that's what I thought when, when I read her characters. So yeah, Sharp Object was definitely not a good one. Maybe Gone Girl was. I saw the movie, it was very annoying, but in a way, 
it was supposed to be. If you've seen the movie or read the book, you know the ending. They're supposed to get mad, but I'm not gonna read any more of her books. Seriously, it just sharp object was way too much for me. The next book is like the first book in the sense that I was simply not in the right the right age group for this book, and it's uh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. And if you've seen the book, you know it has a pretty cool concept, it has a lot of uh, photos, very strange photos, and the author actually saw those photos and decided to make a story out of them. I do think it's a pretty cool idea, but I don't think this book is really suitable for anyone above the age of, I don't know, I think 14. Uh, I was simply too old for this book. But this was actually uh, the fault of a bookshop where I saw this book because before it became so famous I just saw it in the uh, sci-fi fantasy section of a bookshop and they did have a, a different section for young adults um, sci-fi fantasy and the book was in the adult fantasy section so I thought you know it may be about younger people, but it's probably suitable for adults because the book was there and simply someone made a mistake by putting the book there, so that wasn't my fault. But anyway, this book was for me pretty childish. It is for the younger audience and there are some young adult books, like I mentioned before, that are suitable for grown-ups, especially if you're a grown-up with, you know, a heart of a child. But I do think that Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children is simply too childish if you're grown up, so I'm not gonna read the sequels, not gonna watch the movie, just like Beautiful Creatures. Okay guys, this is the last book that I want to talk about and it's the only book that I actually still own. I could not get rid of it just because the cover is so beautiful. See for yourselves. Wicked by Gregory Maguire. Just look at how pretty that is. and It's not. It's not over. Hold on. Ta -da! It's just too pretty for me to get rid of. So Wicked tells the story of Elphaba, which is the Wicked Witch of the West from the Wizard of Oz stories. And uh, she's like the protagonist here, she's the good guy. And I do like the fact that, you know, it's kind of a twist on a famous story. But that's where it ends. This book is just written in such pretentious language. I had to fight to read an entire page. Also, I think this book is just too long. Some parts of it are just so boring. And if I could cut this book into a third or even a quarter, that would probably make it more interesting. Some people really love this book and this entire series. I'm not gonna read the sequel, but I do think the Broadway musical was a lot better. It's very different if you've seen the musical and wanna read the book or the other way around, it's very different. And let's just say, I would rather hear Kirsten Chenoweth singing popular any day than rereading this book. Okay, you guys, that was my list of disappointing books. I hope I didn't disappoint any of you too much by, I don't know, talking about all your favorite books or something. But as you can see, some of them are really a matter of this book was not for me. There are only a few that really, really annoyed me. Obviously, I want to know what you think. Which books did you approach thinking it would be great and you were really, really disappointed from? Please share with me. I want to know. And guys, Thank you for watching and if you like this video and if you comment then I will also say thank you for your likes and thank you for your comments. That means a lot to me like always and I always like to hear what you think. You guys recommend me some books and I love to hear your opinions just generally. I love when people disagree with me because it makes things a lot more interesting. So anyway, like this video, comment, read which books disappointed you and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.